G'day guys, welcome to another Soviet Lens Review. Today we are out and about in beautiful sunny Perth taking a look at the MC Zenitar M f1.9, not the f1.7 version. And I've had the chance to play around with this lens for a couple of months now and uh, got a really got a feel for it. And today we're going to be taking a look at uh, you know whether this lens is worth picking up for use on modern digital cameras and you know what its drawbacks are, what its strengths are, and whether you should pick up this specific variant of the lens. So without any further ado, let's jump into it and take a look at one of the last lenses produced in the Soviet Union. Let's start off with some basics of this lens. So the MC Zenitar M 50mm f1.9 is a planar based optical design with six glass elements in four groups. It tips in the scales at about 235 grams and has six aperture blades and an M42 mount, although there was also a K mount version made with the same optical design. This lens has a minimum focusing distance of 45 centimeters and a front filter thread that's 52 mils wide. And the lens was manufactured at KMZ, now Zenit, uh, back from 1991 through to after the fall of the Soviet Union. My copy, as you can tell from the first two digits of the serial number, was made in 1994. It's worth noting that this Zenitar is not the same lens as the Zenitar M or ME1 50mm f1.7, which has an Ultron based design. Now let's get into some tests. Starting off with the vignetting of this lens of MC Zenitar M it displays strong vignetting wide open that's almost gone by f4 and fully corrected from f5.6 onwards. Now the MC in the name of this lens lets you know that it is multi-coated although as we've come to expect with Soviet designed multi-coatings even late ones they don't do too much to actually stop flare. Now the good news is that when it comes to flare after f1.9 the flares don't actually reduce image quality at all. They just get in the way in the frame. You can see here as I stop down another characteristic of this lens, the aperture petals are not blackened. So you get this sort of aperture effect up against super bright sunlight, which uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not great, but it's kind of a bit fun. This lens does have some nice sun stars which start to appear at f8, but they are much more pronounced closer to f11 to f16. Now, when it comes to barrel distortion, there is some present with the MC Zenitar M, although it's nothing you can't correct in post. Focus breathing, however, is apparent when pulling focus from near to far, so you can add that to the list of potentially unwanted cinematic effects this lens displays. Now, as you can see, so far, the MC Zenitar M doesn't have a very good report card. However, that's about to change as we dive into the lens's sharpness. First off, at f1.9, there is plenty of center sharpness and actually quite a bit of resolution that holds all the way out to the edges of the frame. That's not common amongst Soviet lenses from very wide open. There is a lack of contrast that produces kind of like a blooming effect. Stop down to f2.8, contrast increases quite a bit there. You gain a touch of resolution. At f4 though, things are now starting to look really, really good. There's no ghosting left over. And then f5.6 is where you end up with basically a perfect image edge to edge. This stays basically the same at f8 before starting to diffuse at f11 and below due to the effects of diffraction. Now I put these results into a sharpness test program I wrote that uses an algorithm similar to modern focus peaking to spit out a sharpness value. As you can see, it's an impressive showing here, a better result than almost any other Soviet lens I've tested. So we know that this lens is sharp. Let's take a look at some photos to see what it can do in the field. Okay guys, here we are in ON1 Photo Raw, taking a look at some photos from the MC Zenitar M, starting off with this nature scene here. And uh, this is looking really, really nice. I love the bokeh on this one. And it kind of shows you the bokeh that you're gonna get from the MC Zenitar M. In the background, it is a little bit busy. Look, it doesn't fare too well with these challenging backgrounds, but honestly, I mean, I kind of like how it renders. It does give a real painterly effect and some people are really gonna like this. Uh, as we move to the next photo here, as well. Look, I love how the MC Zenitar M renders skin tones. It does that really well. But again, in these really kind of busy backgrounds, you are going to notice just a touch of longitudinal chromatic aberration on the bokeh, which is those kind of color fringing in the out of focus areas. A little bit of soap bubbling there as well. But moving on to a shot 
shot at a closer focusing distance of some coffee here and you can see the lens is rendering this really really nicely the uh, kind of transition from in to out of focus area is super silky smooth and because it's not a really challenging background with a high dynamic range of contrast and highlights and all of that there is no real soap bubbling whatsoever so a great example of what this lens can do Moving on here to a little shot at Betty's Jetty, Elizabeth Key, and uh, if we zoom in here, you can see the kind of resolution that you're going to get out of this lens. Again, this was only on a 24 megapixel camera. All of these uh, shots were shot in my Nikon Z6, and you can see as you zoom in here, you're getting a good deal of resolution. Nothing's too blurry. I mean, you can really pick out uh, everything that you need to from what is a 24 megapixel image. So stop down. This was about f11. You're going to get some good resolution. Now, I've kept this shot in here just to show you what not to do this is obviously a bad shot but uh, this was shot at f1.9 and you can see f1.9 outside in these really challenging situations where you've got uh, well a lot of light to be honest and you're just going to get ghosting everywhere so f1.9 is really only a aperture only an aperture that you'd use if you're shooting a single subject and want to get a lot of blur behind them this is an example of the lens's fringing characteristics so again shot at f1.9 outside uh, we can see it really doesn't actually display that much fringing there is ghosting which i would say is a different thing but uh, fringing wise just this tiniest 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 bit of red fringing on the tree leaves there but outside of that it is pretty clean and as we move on to another one here nice little shot of some running water again i love the contrast of this lens once you stop it down this was shot at about f 2.8 or maybe even f 4 i want to say and uh, it just yeah renders everything really really nicely love the colors as well minimal color correction done to these ones and another example of the lenses bokeh and how it can actually be smooth you can almost start to see a bit of a um, a sort of cat's eye effect here or a sort of kind of swirly bokeh effect but it really isn't too pronounced with this lens another great example of what the mc zenitar m can do in a portrait situation everything's bright it pops really well love the colors that come out of this lens they are very natural but also still very vibrant and this is just a straight out of camera jpeg i have not done much editing to this at all and it's looking really really fun and vibrant another one as well you can see the bokeh here you can see the sharpness in those mint leaves it's captured everything and looks really good and of course because it does not show too much distortion you can use it for architectural photos like this now i know my lines aren't lined up uh, my verticals but look this is a really fun shot i enjoyed getting this one and the nc zenitar m did it really really well you've got lots of definition in the bricks lots of contrast and yeah look lots of great color there is nothing wrong at all with this shot this this one, a little bit of a fun one, a rose with some uh, kind of color grading put onto it as well. Forgot that one. But uh, yeah, look, overall, I think you can see from these photos that the MC Zenitar M, it is a very capable lens, particularly when you stop it down. You're not going to run into any of those issues that you see at f1.9. But even at f1.9, you know, we can see it can be a really, really nice portrait lens. So guys, there you go. That is the MC Zenitar M 50mm f1.9, one of the last lenses to come out of the Soviet Union and uh, one of the first lenses to come out after it fell as well. A really interesting lens, you know, definitely has some usability today. I found myself struggling at f1.9, but honestly, stop down. This is probably one of my favorite 50 mils to use. Let me know what you think though, down in the comments and uh, feel free to subscribe We've just hit over 3,000 subscribers here on Soviet Lens Reviews. Thank you so much for that, guys. But until the next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.